Tenakoto Katoa. Today is the first Sunday of Advent. It is the beginning of the liturgical year for the Christian Church. And so we gather together to celebrate Mass in this historic chapel at St Mary's Convent, Ponsonby. This chapel has been a place of prayer and ritual for thousands of sisters, pupils, relatives, past pupils, and the staff and present members even of St Mary's College next door. We welcome you to it as a place of peace, a place of love, a place of joy and quiet and reflection. Today, we wish to be part of the Universal Church as we celebrate the coming of the baby Jesus in the Nativity. Our part is to be a, a source of joy and hope. Even in this world, which is in chaos at the moment, we can look forward to the coming of this little baby whose birth changed the world, who gave us a path to salvation and redemption, and who brought us to know the gift of love and the gift of gratitude. So as we celebrate this Mass, we thank God for the blessings that we have. We ask God to remember all those who perhaps do not have the blessings of a Christian life or of a spiritual life. But we know that the Jesus that we believe in, the God-made man, came for every person, not just perhaps those of us who are believers. And we would like to think that as we celebrate this Mass, the joy and hope, the grace-filled and faith-filled times as we lead up to the birthday will be ones of hope and peace and joy for each of you. I lift up my soul, O my God. In you I have trusted. Let me not be put to shame, nor let my enemies exult over me, and let none who hope in you be put to shame. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. The Lord be with you. Thank you to Sister Judith for the welcome to this beautiful chapel of St. Mary's College, Auckland. I have with me Father Ezio Blazzoni and Father John Allardyce, and we are the Marist community of Mount Eden, being a bubble together as the on-site congregation while we join with you at a distance to celebrate this first Sunday of Advent. As we gather to prepare for the coming of the Lord Jesus, we acknowledge our sin as we begin. Lord Jesus, you came as a babe at Bethlehem. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Lord Jesus, you will come in power and glory at the end of time. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. 
Lord Jesus, you come where two or three are gathered in your name. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Let us pray. Grant your faithful, we pray, Almighty God, the resolve to run forth to meet your Christ with righteous deeds at his coming, so that gathered at his right hand, they may be worthy to possess the heavenly kingdom through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God forever and ever. A reading from the book of the prophet Jeremiah. The days are surely coming, says the Lord, when I will fulfill the promise I made to the house of Israel and the house of Judah. In those days and at that time, I will cause a righteous branch to spring up for David, and he shall execute justice and righteousness in the land. In those days, Judah will be saved and Jerusalem will live in safety. And this is the name by which it will be called. The Lord is our righteousness. The word of the Lord. To you, O Lord, I lift my soul. To you, O Lord, I lift my soul. Make me know your ways, O Lord. Teach me your paths. Lead me in your truth and teach me, for you are the God of my salvation. To you, O Lord, I lift my soul. Good and upright is the Lord. Therefore, he instructs sinners in this way. He leads the humble in what is right and teaches the humble his way. To you, O Lord, I lift my soul. All the paths of the Lord are steadfast love and faithfulness for those who keep his covenant and his decrees. The friendship of the Lord is for those who fear him and he makes his covenant known to them. A reading from the first letter of Paul to the Thessalonians. Beloved, may the Lord make you increase and abound in love for one another and for all, just as we abound in love for you. And may the Lord so strengthen your hearts in holiness that you may be blameless before our God and Father at the coming of our Lord Jesus with all his saints. Finally, sisters and brothers, we ask and urge you in the Lord Jesus that as you learned from us how you ought to live and to please God, as in fact you are doing, you should do so more and more. For you know what instructions we gave you through the Lord Jesus. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Show us your mercy and love 
and grant us your salvation. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Luke. Glory to you, O Lord. Jesus spoke to his disciples about his return in glory. There will be signs in the sun, the moon, and the stars, and on earth distress among nations confused by the roaring of the sea and the waves. People will faint from fear and foreboding of what is coming upon the world, for the powers of the heavens will be shaken. Then they will see the Son of Man coming in a cloud with power and great glory. Now, when these things begin to take place, stand up and raise your heads because your redemption is drawing near. Be on guard so that your hearts are not weighed down with dissipation and drunkenness and the worries of this life. And that day catch you unexpectedly like a trap, for it will come upon all who live on the face of the whole earth. Be alert at all times, praying that you may have the strength to escape all these things that will take place and to stand before the Son of Man. The Gospel of the Lord. Today, the season of Advent begins. And Advent is a coming. Roman emperors used to make a solemn visitation of the major cities of their empire when they ascended to the throne. So, those cities would prepare for the coming of the emperor. They would get ready for his advent. It's hard for us to imagine what a big deal that was then. But an episode in the history of New Zealand might give us a hint. In the summer of 1953-54, the newly crowned Queen Elizabeth and her dashing husband, Prince Philip, came to New Zealand in that special sense of a coming. The Queen visited 46 towns around New Zealand and attended 110 functions crowds turned up hours before she was due and waited patiently for the split second when she drove past so as to wave their flags. At Tirau, normally a community of 600 people, there was a crowd estimated at 10,000 for her drive past. Sheep were dyed red, white, and blue. And citizens were instructed when and how to plant blue lobelias, red salvias, and white begonias. In New Plymouth, the bowling club members and the local pony club arranged themselves 
in a gigantic letter E. Screens were erected to hide unsightly buildings. Hardly a car did not sport a Union Jack. Scarcely a building in the main cities was not covered in bunting and flowers during the day and electric lights at night. If you look on YouTube for Queen Elizabeth II's New Zealand tour, 1953, you can see original footage of her arriving in Pukekohe to be greeted by the whole town and everyone is dressed up to the nines. In today's gospel, Luke quotes Jesus telling us to be ready for the Son of Man coming in a cloud with power and great glory. Last Sunday, we hailed Christ as King. This Sunday, we declare that the King is coming. How should we prepare for his advent? What will it be like? How long have we got to get ready? Luke implies that the advent of the Son of Man will be like the ascension, just the other way round. Instead of departing and being hidden from sight by a cloud, he will come on the clouds of glory. Our biggest clue for what the second coming of Christ will be like is his first coming at Bethlehem. That's why we celebrate Advent in the run-up to Christmas. How the world was prepared for his first coming may help us to be ready for the second time around. So as we prepare for Christmas 2021, we look backward to when Jesus was born into the world and we look forward to the end of time and we hope in the second coming of Christ. As for how long we have to get ready, dogmatic statement, we have no idea. The Seventh-day Adventists have the record for the most wrong predictions about when Jesus will be back. The Catholic Church is sensibly rather vaguer on the subject. Be ready, he's coming, we don't know when. In fact, regularly through the last 2,000 years, our ancestors have stood and listened to the same gospel that we listen to. They too heard the words, be on guard so that your hearts are not weighed down with dissipation and drunkenness and the worries of this life and that day catch you unexpectedly like a trap. For it will come upon all who live on the face of the whole earth. Be alert at all times, praying that you may have the strength to escape all these things that will take place and to stand before the Son of Man. We believe that Jesus is going to be the end time judge. As we say in our creed, he ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of God, the Father Almighty. From there he will come to judge the living and the dead. So we're going to be judged by him one day when we don't expect it. So we want to make ourselves into people who will be acceptable to him. There isn't going to be a reset opportunity on the last day. That's what last means. Until then, we need to remind ourselves regularly of what, or rather who, is utterly important. We need to offer God his due. What is his right? Because 
Everything we have is from him. And this is little enough to offer back. A symbolic offering of bread and wine. An hour of our week. Freely given in thanks for all that we have and all that we are. We pray with our ancestors. We pray with the church throughout the world. We pray with the people watching throughout the country. We pray the words we are given because for a time we're caught up into something which is bigger than us. And when we go away from this time, we'll be a little bit more connected, a little bit bigger, a little more human because of what we've been part of. Then we have to try and live it out for a week and then return to be reminded once more, all in the hope that one day we will be able to stand with confidence and integrity before the Son of Man when he comes. the faith of the church. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, consubstantial with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation he came down from heaven and by the Holy Spirit was incarnate of the Virgin Mary and was made man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried and rose again on the third day in accordance with the Scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and His kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins, and I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Confident in Christ who intercedes for us in heaven, we put before him now our prayers for ourselves and for our world. In these days that are coming, may we with humble and grateful hearts prepare the way of the Lord for Jesus, our Emmanuel. We pray to the Lord. Lord we pray for Pope Francis for bishops Pat and Michael, as together with all leaders of the church worldwide, they lead us on a journey to a synodal church in unity, participation, and communion. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. We pray for each one of you watching this Mass that Christ will keep you safe, give you healing, and lovingly protect you in these days of pandemic. We pray to the Lord. Lord hear our we pray for frontline workers that during this Advent season 
They will be blessed with goodness and generosity for their service to our entire nation in the COVID pandemic. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. We pray for people living in conflict situations throughout the world. May efforts for peace, justice, and understanding be not just words, but living reality. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. As we remember Mary and Elizabeth in these days before Jesus' birth, let us pray for all women, especially those who are oppressed, that they may be respected and their rights to basic human needs be upheld. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear We pray for those who have died and whose anniversaries occur at this time. May they abide in God's love, peace, and joy. And we sing. God, our Father, we put all these prayers before you in the name of Jesus, who is Lord forever and ever. Amen. Amen. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the bread we offer you. Fruit of the earth and work of human hands, it will become for us the bread of life. By the mystery of this water and wine, may we come to share in the divinity of Christ, who humbled himself to share in our humanity. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the wine we offer you. Fruit of the vine and work of human hands, it will become our spiritual drink. With humble spirit and contrite heart, may we be accepted by you, O Lord. And may our sacrifice in your sight this day be pleasing to you, Lord God. Wash me, O Lord, from my iniquity and cleanse me from my sin. Pray that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice at your hands for the praise and glory of his name, for our good and the good of all the Holy Church. Accept, we pray, O Lord, these offerings we make, gathered from among your gifts to us, and may what you have granted us to celebrate devoutly here below gain for us the prize of eternal redemption. 
through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks. Lord, Holy Father, almighty and eternal God, through Christ our Lord. For he assumed at his first coming the lowliness of human flesh and so fulfilled the design you formed long ago and opened for us the way to salvation. That when he comes again in glory and majesty and all is at last made manifest, we who watch for that day may inherit the great promise in which we now dare to hope. And so, with angels and archangels, with thrones and dominions, and with all the hosts and powers of heaven, we sing the hymn of your glory, as without end we acclaim. Holy, 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 Lord God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord, Hosanna in the highest. You are indeed holy, O Lord, and all you have created rightly gives you praise. For through your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, by the power and working of the Holy Spirit, you give life to all things and make them holy, and you never cease to gather a people to yourself, so that from the rising of the sun to its setting, a pure sacrifice may be offered to your name. Therefore, O Lord, we humbly implore you, by the same Spirit, graciously make holy these gifts brought to you for consecration, that they may become the body and blood of your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, at whose command we celebrate these mysteries. For on the night he was betrayed, he himself took bread, and giving you thanks, he said the blessing, broke the bread, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it. For this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice and giving you thanks, he said the blessing and gave the chalice to his disciples saying, take this, all of you, and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. We proclaim your death, O Lord, and profess your resurrection until you come again. Therefore, O Lord, as we celebrate the memorial of the saving passion of your Son, his wondrous resurrection and ascension into heaven, and as we look forward to his second coming, we offer you in thanksgiving this holy and living sacrifice. Look, we pray, upon the oblation of your church and recognizing the sacrificial victim by whose death you willed to reconcile us to yourself, Grant that we, who are nourished by the body and blood of your Son, and filled with his Holy Spirit, may become one body, one spirit in Christ. May he make of us an eternal offering to you, so that we may obtain an inheritance with your elect, especially with the most blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with your blessed apostles and martyrs, and with all the saints on whose constant intercession in your presence, 
we rely for unfailing help. May this sacrifice of our reconciliation, we pray, O Lord, advance the peace and salvation of all the world. Be pleased to confirm in faith and charity your pilgrim church on earth with your servant Francis, our Pope, and Patrick, our Bishop, the order of bishops, all the clergy, and the entire people you have gained for your own. Listen graciously to the prayers of this family whom you have summoned before you. In your compassion, O merciful Father, gather to yourself all your children scattered throughout the world. To our departed brothers and sisters, and to all who are pleasing to you at their passing from this life. Give kind admittance to your kingdom. There we hope to enjoy forever the fullness of your glory through Christ our Lord, through whom you bestow on the world all that is good. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. Amen. At the Savior's command, informed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Saviour, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your spirit. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Grant us peace. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word and my soul shall be healed. Let us pray. May these mysteries, O Lord, in which we have participated, profit us, we pray. For even now, as we walk amid passing things, you teach us by them to love the things of heaven and to hold fast to what endures through Christ our Lord. Bow your heads and pray for God's blessing. 
the response to each of these petitions is Amen. May the almighty and merciful God, by whose grace you have placed your faith in the first coming of his only begotten Son, and yearn for his coming again, sanctify you by the radiance of Christ's advent, and enrich you with his blessing. Amen. Amen. As you run the race of this present life, may he make you firm in faith, joyful in hope, and active in charity. Amen. Amen. So that, rejoicing now with devotion at the Redeemer's coming in the flesh, you may be endowed with the rich reward of eternal life when he comes again in majesty. Amen. And may the blessing of Almighty God the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit come down on you and remain with you forever. Amen. Go in peace, glorifying the Lord by your life. Thanks be God. night, we wait in darkness, longing for